Welcome to the Black Belt Update for the second, third week of March, 2023. We had an awesome training schedule and participation by all of our students this last Black Belt Update. They did an amazing job training at the school. You're getting better every day. So I wanna refocus on what you need to do to pass your pretest and then talk a little bit about the demonstration that you have to do during your next test. So as you're passing your pretest sections, you're gonna first practice and pass your traditional forms. Then you'll do your fighting form. And then the actual sparring component will happen during the test. So there'll be a day where we just do sparring and at the actual demonstration and test, there won't be any sparring that will occur other than demonstration. So you'll pass all your pre-test requirements before you actually take the actual test where your parents will see your demonstration. As you pass each section, it's important to remember, focus on what you're not good at currently. Think a little bit about it, what you need to do, and how you're going to improve it. So as we give you a correction and you're writing them down in your notebooks, you want to focus on the correction we give you, come up with a strategy on how to fix it, and then more importantly, practice that mistake. So this weekend I was working with one of the students and they made a mistake and then they just practiced the whole form. Well, that's not the correct way to do it. You have to go back, stop, think about what the mistake was, refocus on that mistake, practice the transition from the move and whatever the mistake was over and over till you feel confident. Then go back to the beginning of the form, do the entire form, and you'll notice that when you get to that mistake, you'll remember and you won't make it any longer. Some key points to focus on. I notice that people are not focusing on their stances, so start with stance. Do the entire form, make sure that your stance is correct. If it's walking stance, check your distance. If it's front stance, check your distance, make sure your knee is not bent past parallel to the ground. So your shin to your ankle to your knee is perpendicular. That means a straight line up and down. Not tilted forward, not tilted backwards. That's a common mistake. Also make sure your back foot is turned at least to a 45 degree angle facing the direction of your front foot. On the back stance, it's a little bit wider these days and a little bit narrower between the two feet. So check with Dr. Geddes or myself for that. Finally, the horse stance is a little bit narrower. It's only two feet distance and check your hand position. And this is the same for the bow staff and those forms. Those are key things that I see. Once you've checked your stance, now it's time to check the beginning motion of the technique. How does it begin? How does it transition? And remember the general rule is, if it's going low, it comes from high to low. If it's going high, it comes from low to high and middle goes to middle. Then understand your ending position. Where does the technique end? And what is its final position when you're there? And then relax during the execution. Relax, tighten for a moment and relax. Finally, the explosiveness. So then do the form again to make sure your explosiveness is correct. Have you done the form with sufficient power to show that you understand the technique and how it generates power? So make sure that you understand the purpose of every technique in all the traditional forms how it starts, how it ends, and what its meaning is. Is it a strike? Is it a block? Or does it have another purpose? If you do that, then you'll surely pass the traditional portion of the test. Go back and review the Torch Club program content we put online or look at the additional stuff. This is gonna help you with the fighting portion of the test. Go back and look at it and see what we're trying to do and why we're doing it and how it works. So when you actually do the sparring portion, you can demonstrate some really great skills. Lastly, regardless of what form you're doing in the traditional forms, make sure that you understand each part, what its execution is, and just like the traditional forms, what's the purpose of the motion? What is the purpose of the movement? And how do you do it explosively? And where do you place, place your key ups so that people understand the power component of it? Finally, meet with us to discuss your demo. What are you gonna demonstrate for your test and your demonstration after you've passed the pretest? This is what your parents will see. This is what your friends will see. So it will be a combination of traditional form, fighting form, and weapons. Or it may be a matching set, or it might be a self-defense sequence with a partner. 
you can do your demonstration by yourself. You can work with a partner of your choice, but it should be something that demonstrates all that you've learned for these past years at gold medal and at peak performance. Something that you will be proud of, something that you can look back on and say, I did an awesome job and people will understand that you worked hard on it. Do that in consultation with your instructor. And then finally, don't forget your written requirement. This is what some people forget and they turn it in too late and then it's rejected. So you're gonna to have to make sure <coughs> that your written requirement meets the requirements that we expect from you. And then talk to your instructor about it if you need help or your parents and they'll give you some time and help and understanding with that as well. We're extremely proud of you. We've had a number of you that have made it this far. And don't worry, you're all going to make it, but you really do have to apply yourself. It's always gonna be a little harder than you thought, but it's also gonna be re more rewarding than you thought. And it should be something that you look back on and say, I did an awesome job, I worked incredibly hard, and I'm really proud of what I've done so far. I'm going to attach another video for you to watch, maybe a Torch Club video or something on this Black Belt update, but please go back and review each update. And remember, we're looking at your online program to see how much of it you've completed and watched. So don't think that we haven't checked that. We want you to look at that all because it serves a purpose. If you need ideas for your demonstration, go to our website where we have the new WT forms that somebody had suggested because they're very much demonstration oriented. So if you look at the website, you'll see new WT forms and they're really jumping and flying and kicking. And I think it'd be a great place for you to start as you think about and imagine what your demonstration is gonna be. And please remember, believe in yourself because no one else can believe in you until you believe in you. This is your peak performance reassessment process using your peak performance training center training manual. The first step is to open your notebook and review your instructor's corrections. Then you'll revise your schedule and training plan, focus on the weaknesses from the above, maintain your best techniques and strengths, but your results, as you need to know and will remember, will always be based on your work product. Open your notebook. Take a look at all the corrections that we've given you over your period of your pretest, And more importantly, think about each class and that record that you've been keeping, trying to make yourself better and learn the techniques. Once you do this, you'll have a better understanding of what you need to improve. And then you can number two, revise your schedule and training plan. The original schedule will change based upon the instructor corrections and your training plan may also change and need to be adapted to your new idea on how to get ready for your black belt test. Finally, focus on the weaknesses that you have listed from the above review. If you focus on those weaknesses and create a plan to correct them, then you will certainly be ready for the upcoming black belt test. Four, maintain the best techniques and your strengths. So don't forget to practice the things that you did well and keep those healthy so that they'll also be ready for your upcoming test. Finally, but most important, remember, your results will be based upon the work that you put in. What you put in is what you'll get out on the other side. If you train at 50%, you'll have a 50% result on the other side. If you train at 100%, then you'll be guaranteed a 100% result on the other side. Good luck as you continue to prepare for your black belt test. The first page of the training manual is broken down into weeks so that you can plan out your week of training and insert the different skills that you will be working on, for example, like punse, sparring, or weapons. In this way, you can design your training program based upon your needs. This is the same system I used when I was training for the Olympics and I would set up my training schedule based on a six week rotation and look at every day. I had three different training sessions, so I would use them so that I could set up the different aspects of my training and focus on what I needed to focus on. Your individual training program will be individual for you based on your needs and what you're trying to accomplish. 
You might spend more time on pumse, or you might spend more time on sparring drills, depending upon where you are in the program and what you need. You'll fix this daily and weekly and even monthly after talking to your instructor, but we base it on a six-week training cycle. This will be followed by a daily post-training review. In this, you will ask yourself two questions, then you'll ask your coach or your parents the same two questions, and then finally you will ask yourself the final question. In this case, you'll ask yourself, what did I do well today? What did I do less well? Then you'll ask your coach, what do you think I did well today? And what did I do less well? And then finally, you'll make an observation as to what you think you might do better or differently in the future to adjust to your training and more importantly, to reach your goals and outcomes. This daily review is important and it must be documented. This way you can have an opportunity to reflect back on how the training went, whether the drills or skills are working for you, and more importantly, the reflection and the observation of the coach with his analysis or her analysis will help you better plan for future success. And then finally, we're talking about our daily planner. This is where we think about how we're going to train each day, how many training sessions we'll be doing and with who. So in this one, we use the example of training at home with your dad. You're doing target drills. It's an endurance workout and they had a 90% completion rate. This is followed by an 11 a.m. workout with Master Riz in Mountain View, and they're doing chest protector drills, which are body conditioning, and it was a 100% completion rate. Finally, at 9 a.m. on a Saturday, there was a Foster City workout with your partner, Kaya, doing Pumse and working strictly on technique with an 85% completion rate. This is where you build your daily plan for success. This is where you put together your entire workout each day, but more importantly, this is how you set up that six-week training using that feedback to see how you can accomplish the goals you've set for yourself and become the best that you can be.